Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on interpreting the percentages in the output for the chi-square test in SPSS. As always, if you find this video helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. I certainly appreciate it. So I'm using fictitious data here in the data editor in SPSS, and I have two variables, training and outcome. So let's assume that we want to teach a certain set of counseling skills and we have two modalities available, online and face-to-face. -face. So we have this training variable, and it is dichotomous. It only has these two levels. Later on, after the training's over, we measure the counseling skills with an assessment that returns a pass or a fail. So this variable outcome only has two possible values, pass or fail. If I move up here to this A1 button on the ribbon, we can see the values for these variables. The labels turn off, we have the values, and it's just zero or one. So just a zero or one for training, and a zero or one for outcome. So we have two dichotomous variables, and we want to look at the association between these two variables, so we'll run a chi-square test. I'll go to Analyze, descriptive statistics, and crosstabs. So this is what the crosstabs dialog looks like by default. And in this instance, with this particular design, we're conceptualizing the training variable as a predictor variable. So I'm gonna move that to the row list box. That's not required. However, that's what we usually would do. We put the predictor variable in the row list box, and then the outcome variable in the column list box. Under statistics, I'm just going to check off chi-square. That's the only statistic I want to produce with these data. And then under the cells option, I'm going to add under counts, I'm going to add expected. Observed is checked off by default. And then the percentages I was referring to earlier. We have in this percentages frame, row, column, and total percentages. I'm going to check off all three and press continue. Those are the only changes I'm going to make to the default cross tabs dialog. Click OK. And we have the output here for the chi-square. So we have a case processing summary. You can see we had 90 records, no missing values. And then we have this training times outcome cross tabulation. And these different percentages I'm going to go over. I've copied this table over to Excel. So here we have the same information, just copied over to Excel. We have the training variable online, face to face, the outcome variable fail and pass. So I'm going to show you how to produce these percentages the percent within training, percent within outcome, and the percent of total. These percentages here. I'm going to show you how to produce these to the right here. Now you can see I didn't put borders around all of the cells because some of the calculations are straightforward. So I'm just going to mention those. However, for these other calculations, I'm going to write a function over here that will produce the same result. So first let's take a look at the count. So we have a count for online, the online level of the training variable account for the face-to-face -face level of the training variable, a total count for the fail level of outcome, the pass level of outcome, and the total number of participants in the data set, so it's 90. So there's 90 records in that SPSS data set. So here in the top left, you have the number of people who failed the counseling skills test who were in the online level. That's 23, number passed 24. Down here we have the number of people that failed in the face-to-face -face level, 13, number passed 30. And under count, the total number that failed versus the total number that passed. On 
the column here for total. You have the total number of people in the online category, 47, the total in the face-to-face, -face, and the total number of participants in the study, 90. So first I'm going to take a look at the percent within training. So here we're looking at online, the online level of the training variable. And we're considering this 48.9% value. This will be the first one we'll look at. So when we look at percent within training, because training was loaded on the row of the cross tabulation, an outcome on the column, immediately we're going to think of the row. So we have this 48.9%. That's the number of participants in the online group who failed the test. It's 23 divided by the total number of people in the online group. So over here to the right, this would be equal sign and then 23 divided by 47, 48.9. Same thing for this 51.1, except we're going to use the count for pass. So these are participants in the online group that pass the assessment. So this will be equal sign 24 divided by the total number of participants in the online group 47. 51.1%. Now when we move to the total this is just 47 divided by 47. That's where we get 100% there. Moving down here to percent within outcomes. So with percent within training, we're thinking of the row. Percent within outcome, because outcome is loaded on the column, we're thinking of the column statistics. So the 63.9%, we get that from taking the number of participants in the online group who failed and dividing that by the total number of participants that failed. So that's 23. So I'll highlight this. That's 23 divided by 36, 63.9. Same thing for this 44.4 percent. It'll be equal sign number of individuals who passed divided by the total number of individuals who passed. So this would be this 24 is the total number of individuals who passed in the online group. And we'll divide that by the total number of participants who passed for both groups. That's 54. 44.4%. Now moving to this 52.2%. This percent is calculated by taking the total number of individuals in the online group and dividing it by the total number of participants in the study. So this will be equal sign 47 divided by 90. 52.2. Then we have, for percent of total, we have this 25.6. So we calculate this by looking at the number of participants in the online group who failed and dividing that by the total number of people in the study. That's percent of total. So equal sign 23 divided by 90, 25.6. Same thing here for 26.7. It's going to be equal sign and the number of individuals who passed, 24, divided by the number of participants in the study, 90, 26.7. And again, for percent of total, it's 47 divided by 90, that's 52.2. Moving down to the face-to-face, -face, these calculations are the same as what we have for online. It's just for the face-to-face -face level of the training variable. So I'm going to move through these fairly quickly. So here for the 30.2, this will be 13 divided by 43. For 69.8, this will be 30 divided by 43. For 100%, this is 43 divided by 43. 36.1%, this will be 13 divided by 36 and 55.6% will be 30 
divided by 54 and then 47.8 will be 43 divided by the total number of participants in the study, 90, 47.8. Here for percent of total, again the same logic as we saw for the online level, this will be 14.4 percent, so equal sign, 13 divided by the total number of participants in the study, 90, and the same thing for this 33 percent, 30 divided by 90. 33.3. And again, this 47.8 is 43 divided by 90. Then for the remaining percentages, these are for the total. So percent within training, we have this 40%. This will be 36 divided by 90, 40%. And then for the 60%, this will be 54 divided by 90. This 100% here is 90 divided by 90. For this percent within outcome, we have 100%. This is 36 divided by 36. This 100% here in the pass column, this is 54 divided by 54. And this 100% here in the total column is 90 divided by 90. For percent of total, this 40%, 36 divided by 90. This 60%, 54 divided by 90, and again this 100% is 90 divided by 90. So now after looking at these percentages, I'm going to move back to SPSS, and we can look at the result of the chi-square test, and we're going to interpret the p-value here for the Pearson chi-square, 0 0.070. We can see this is not statistically significant. The alpha here normally would be 0 0.05, and our probability value is greater than that at 0 0.07. I hope you found this video on interpreting the percentages for a chi-square test in SPSS to be useful. Thanks for watching.